Thailand is known for its incredible food full of spice and flavor. And the best part is it's super affordable. So in this video, we're gonna be showing you all the different types of foods we eat here in Chiang Mai from restaurants to street food. I am so excited. Now Rosh is super hangry, so we better get hurrying along to food stop number one. Now first stop on our food tour of Chiang Mai. We won't lie to you, it's a place we've already been several times already, but it is so delicious we cannot stop coming back. And the positive is it's actually been the most affordable place we've eaten at so far. We are starting off our video today at Lucky 2. Now as Stacey said, we've been here a number of times. We've tried a whole lot of different dishes, noodle dishes, chicken and rice dishes, curry dishes. Today I've gone with a dish that Chiang Mai is very well known for. It's cow soy. Stace has actually had this from here before and said it was one of the best things she's ever eaten. So that's what I've gone with. And Stace has gone with the yellow curry. Both look absolutely delicious. Stace's was 90 baht and mine was only 80 baht. And we each have a drink. Stace is obsessed with banana milkshakes at the moment. So she's gone with the banana milkshake, which is 40 baht. And I went with the iced mocha, which I believe was about 40 baht as well. Now the way that I would describe cow soy is kind of like a Thai ramen. It's like a curry with noodles. It smells delicious. And it comes with two different types of noodles. One being crunchy, which I really appreciate. I love a good mixture of texture. Mm. It's so good. One of the things I love about Lucky 2 as well is that with the rice dishes, like the curries and things like that, they come with rice, which is super handy. We've noticed at some of the other places we've eaten that the curries are the same price as they are here at Lucky 2, and then you have to buy rice extra. And now it's not expensive, it's about 10 or 15 baht for the rice, which is just an observation and something we really like about here. So good, we have not had a bad dish from this place. Like Rosh said, I think we've tried probably at least five or six things off the menu. And every time we try something new, it's even better than the last thing we had. So big thumbs up for Lucky Two. Well, that was absolutely incredible as always. Definitely our favorite spot so far, but we're gonna try a few new places over the next few days. We're gonna hit up some of the famous markets and walking streets as well. But God, Chiang Mai is doing us pretty well on the food front so far. Yeah, I think we gotta get a few steps in to yes. get yeah. things moving. Stop number two on our foodie tour of Chiang Mai. We're gonna hit the streets for this one. We're heading to Tape, I think that's how you pronounce it, Tape Walking Street, otherwise known as the Sunday Night Market. Apparently hundreds of different vendors selling all different crafts and things, but also heaps of food, meant to be an amazing place to eat. So we're pretty excited to hit the streets for the first time here in Chiang Mai. And yes, as the name suggests, it is only open on Sunday nights. Now it is still quite hot here in Chiang Mai. It's about almost 5.30. So we're going to cool off as we wander around the market with a strawberry smoothie. Strawberry shake acquired. A little holder too. It's a simple thing. Oh my god. That's really good. <laughs> yeah, you're going to like this. Better than banana? Mm. <laughs> Sweeter than banana and I like sweet, so yes. Refreshing? Yeah. I don't know if I'm sold on it over a banana shake, but definitely refreshing. And it was 50 baht. Such an elegant woman. Now from all, everything I've read, they tell you to get here as early as you can. I think it opens at about 5 p.m. if I'm not mistaken, because it gets super, super crowded late at night. We've quickly found what seems to be the food section here and the tables are so cute. There's like these tiny, tiny little tables. You sit down very low to the ground and um, I don't think it's going to take long for Stace and I to find something to eat. Now Stace, because you're in what seems to be your banana era here in Thailand, I've just seen some Thai fried banana. I think you should give it a try. I mean, I don't know if it hits the same as a shake. <laughs> we'll find out. Let's tuck them in on the way down. I got my fried banana. This was 20 baht. I think I counted seven pieces, six or seven pieces. I've never had fried banana before. Uh, I'm not sure about it already. Let's hope we like it because we've got seven pieces. So interesting. It feels like my brain is confused because my brain feels like it's eating fried fish because the batter is very much like a, a fried fish batter, but then it's like a bit sweet. You can't taste the banana heaps because of the batter. It's interesting. Not bad. I'm not like dying to get it again, but I also don't not like it. It's, it's interesting. My brain is confused. <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of banana at the best of times. This is, I'm not a great person to go off. Mm -hmm. mm. I kind of like it. It tastes like pineapple. 
You're right about the texture kind of being like battered fish. Mm. Doesn't taste like fish though. I'd recommend getting that. Give it a go. It tastes sweeter than banana. I've managed to put my finger on what the fried banana tastes like. It tastes like apple crumble. Please explain. Guys, my attention is so full on the food and different types of stalls here. I didn't even notice the massive temple. The market is sitting just outside of. Just found a stall selling traditional Thai outfits for dogs. Amazing. Does Ted need one? Ted needs one real bad. Okay, we've made a non-food related purchase, which we didn't think we'd make, but we picked up these cute little notebooks. Rosh loves to write down her ideas and her thoughts and plan videos. She very much likes to handwrite them. That's, that's how she does her best work. So we picked these up. They were 10 baht each. They're super cute. There were so many nice designs. It was super hard to pick, but we've gone for one with the cameras because, you know, we're on YouTube. And one with the elephants because we love elephants and that is obviously a very Chiang Mai related thing. We've now picked up some satay skewers giving us major Singapore flashbacks. If you haven't seen that video, we'll link it up there. It's pretty good. It's 50 baht for six skewers, but you can get different sizes with more skewers. The peanut sauce is really nice, it's kind of a bit creamy. You can never go wrong with a satay skewer. And after some chicken skewers, next up is some vegetarian pad thai. There's a big line at this vendor, so I think it's going to be good. How do they make it so good just like right there in front of you in like a minute? I don't know. And this is 50 baht. This is super fresh. As Rosh said, made right in front of it. It's always a great sign when you're getting street food. If you can see it being cooked for you, in front of you, and there's a line, you know it's nice and fresh. It is very busy at the market right now. I think we came at the perfect time because we were just able to get a table, but the place is pumping. Well, that was awesome. The Sunday walking street or night market is a definite must do if you are in Chiang Mai on a Sunday. It is sad that it's only on Sundays, but I guess it makes it that much bigger and better. The suspense to every Sunday. So many different food options, different cuisines, lots of little things to pick up. It's really, really good. We loved everything we ate. It was yeah. Super delicious. It was really cool being able to order so many different things and not being unable to finish them and also it being so affordable we love that about night markets and uh, we're gonna go to another one tomorrow so stay tuned for that but let's bring you to breakfast tomorrow good morning everyone from another day here in Chiang Mai we are on our way to breakfast walking from our accommodation to the old town now speaking of our accommodation it is called Canary House we booked through booking.com we'll put a link in the description if you'd like to check it out for yourself but we found it really good it's only about a five minute walk to the old town and fairly quiet where we are we got our own private bathroom massive king-size bed and best of all we get free snacks and coffee so <laughs> I really enjoyed that if you've watched our part three video in New York we went to the color factory and got a whole lot of free snacks you will know that you know we're pretty obsessed with free stuff now breakfast this morning is not admittedly it's not a traditional Thai breakfast but we've actually been before and we really really loved it if you've seen our first video in Chiang Mai you'll have seen that but we had to include it in our Chiang Mai food tour video because it was so delicious particularly if you are looking for Western style food these bagels are a must get so we would definitely recommend eating here at least once so I got the exact same thing I got the other day. I got the bacon, egg and cheese. Super hot, super fresh. I feel like it's been so long since I've had like a whole fried egg. Except and it's amazing, except for the other day. But with the cheese and there's a bit of like herb on it, it's so good. I'm a firm believer in if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I also got the exact same thing as what I got the other day. I got the egg, avocado and cheese bagel. But I did get something new. I got the iced mocha right here. So cheap, so good. I really need the coffee fix this morning. Something else small but really cool about this cafe is the use of reusable straws. That is definitely a great place to have breakfast. We absolutely love it there. Super quiet, super chill. Yes, it is probably one of the more expensive meals we will have here in Chiang Mai. But if you are looking for a bit of a more Western style breakfast, that is known to be one of the more affordable places, especially for a fresh bagel. And they have so many different flavor bagels. You can get bagels just with spreads. You can get bagel sandwiches, which is what we got. Or you can get full breakfast spreads with eggs, bacon, and a bagel on the side. Night is once again upon us and we're heading out to another market here in Chiang Mai, arguably the most famous one. It is the Night Bazaar. It is on every single night of the week. So if you do miss the Sunday walking street, never fear. 
you can head on over to the night bazaar. Now this is meant to be absolutely massive, similar to the Sunday marker. You can pick up a whole bunch of different stuff and some food as well. So that's where we're heading tonight for dinner. As they said, we're on our way to another night market, the night bazaar, and we just passed a different night market that we hadn't even heard of. Point Rudy is the market that we've just passed, thinking it was the one that we were meant to stop at, but no, not yet, but there you go. So many different markets around here to explore. We have made it to the Chiang Mai Night Bazaar, not to be confused with the Night Bazaar directly opposite the Chiang Mai Night Bazaar. <laughs> hey guys, me again. So as I said, we made it to the Night Bazaar, but we're really confused because it's like really quiet in here. Not a lot of shops are open. We're not that early, it's like 6.30. Yeah, so later. Uh, we'll be back, we'll check back with you in a sec. And we have made it to a Nusan market. The lanterns have led us in this way. It's not the market we were looking for, but it's the market that has chosen us. So this market is already very different to the one from last night. You can tell that it's a permanent market. We're kind of under this big tent type thing, and a lot of the food stalls are like set in place, if you know what I mean. All right, we have a proposition, if you will. There's a lot of food places here, a lot of them sweet. And uh, we were thinking dessert for dinner. Now, I mean, we're gonna make the decision because this video comes out in the future for us. But let us know down in the comments below, is that acceptable? To clarify, we've been eating so well in Chiang Mai because we can finally afford to eat out. So we're pretty stuffed already from all the amazing food we've had today. Very true. And we've got a big day of Thai food eating tomorrow, which will not be in this video. That will be in our next video. So make sure you stay tuned for that one. So we're just gonna eat a couple things, mostly dessert related, because we've not really had any dessert at a market yet. To clarify, we went out for lunch and didn't film it. We went back to Lucky Two, which is obviously our favorite place. We're not even ashamed. <laughs> Snakes had two banana milkshakes with her lunch, so guys, she... so no judgment zone, please. <laughs> I think dessert. I think it's dessert for dinner. Let's do it. Okay, just because I know you're watching, Mum, we're gonna get some dumplings and then we'll do dessert for the rest of our dinner. Something tells me that this is gonna be my favorite eating experience experience of our trip so far and that is saying something because we've eaten at some really great places and the food here has been amazing I just really love dessert just a little bit of a pre-dessert for dinner some dance for all of you out there <sighs> I'm the responsible one we are having some normal food glasses are off it's food time. Looking at the size of the uh, plate of dumplings they just brought back, I can't say that we're having dessert for dinner anymore. This is enough for two of us. There you go. Dessert. We are having dessert, but first dinner. I have my eyes on at least three different things. Okay, now these were not like handmade in front of me, but they were cooked in front of me, so they're nice and fresh and hot, perfectly fried. I love a good pan fried dumpling gyoza. Let's go. I don't know what the sauce is. Suspicious sauce. They were 100 baht for 11 pieces, which is pretty good. Quite delicious. As Rush mentioned, there are so many side markets off the night bazaar. Pretty much on both sides, you can veer off into these other, I say smaller markets, they're still very, very big. So there is no end to your shopping opportunities, your food opportunities. If you don't see something you like in one of the little market areas, go into another one. It's a pretty cool vibe. Again, lots of seating, which is really cool. It definitely like adds to the atmosphere when you can sit down and eat the food. And as Rosh said as well, these ones are undercover as compared to the Sunday market, which was a bit more open. Uh... <laughs> to begin with. I say local because I'm not sure if they actually are local or kind of more for tourists but we have coconut ice cream which is meant to be something you have to have at these markets. We did try some in Bangkok. If you haven't seen that video we'll link it up there and it was delicious and this one is absolutely giant. You got it was 89 baht for the ice cream and you got to pick two toppings. Now I didn't quite understand what the toppings were. I think we've got a strawberry jelly and some other flavor that I'm afraid is cucumber. <laughs> So Rosh, you can give it a go first. The ice cream's really good. I don't know what that is. That's not cucumber. It's also like really firm. Like really hard. <laughs> but the ice cream, that's just as good as in Bangkok. I should preface this by saying I don't like coconut. <laughs> like I really don't like coconut. It's not too bad though, it's very subtle flavor. It's just a very creamy, it's like a vanilla ice cream with like a tinge of coconut. 
so refreshing. But also, before they put my put the ice cream in the coconut, she really scraped up the inside of the coconut. So there are some definite coconut bits going through there, which I'm not a fan of. But I'll try some of the jelly. I'll try the supposed strawberry. That didn't look good. Blue hob. The flavor of the jelly is really good. I, I think she said it was like coconut jelly. No, I, I could be wrong. I don't know. And now it's time for us to try our second dessert. And this one is also Thai inspired. Definitely something that is known around Thailand. Thank you. Thank you. A little serving of mango sticky rice. It was 60 baht, so not expensive at all. And it is our first time we've had mango sticky rice on this trip. I can almost guarantee I'm not gonna like this. I have a, a phobia of mixing fruit and warm, <laughs> and the rice is warm. I also have a phobia of mixing <laughs> sweet and savory, like it, like fruit and savory. Like I don't like apple crumble, like. So we will see. And it's come with this sauce and Rosh gave it a sniff and she thinks it's some sort of coconut sauce. So, I mean, need I say more? Your life changed. It's just, <laughs> I don't quite get it. So I guess like pineapple on pizza, like, I'm sorry. Why, why is there mango in my rice? <laughs> the mango itself is delicious, super fresh. I'll, I'll try some rice on its own, let's go. the appeal. I do not. But Rosh can try it and see if she likes it. I don't know what you're talking about. This is so good. It's like just sweet enough to be classified as a dessert but not something that you'd like feel sick after if you ate too much of it. I like it. I'd like to clarify that she eats pineapple on pizza <laughs> and she also likes apple crumble. <laughs> okay Rosh is picking up our final dessert of the day. This one is not a, a local dessert. This is just one that caught our eye and we thought we have to get that. We'll throw down a treat on this warm, balmy evening here in Chiang Mai. I have just witnessed a piece of art being made right in front of my eyes. We've gone with the ice cream rolls and it's essentially, they flatten it. It's like cold rock if you're from Australia. Essentially they have a cold rock. And at this place they flatten out the ice cream and they mix all different types of things in to your choosing. And then once it's all mixed together and flattened out, they turn it into scrolls and it becomes a mustard piece. So you got to pick the ice cream flavor to mix in. So as Rosh said, they get like crushed up, mixed into the actual ice cream, and then something to go on top, and then a syrup, all included. It was 89 baht. So to ice cream, we got vanilla. Mixed in, we got Oreo and m, &M. Oreos on top and caramel syrup. It's all in my teeth. <laughs> I'm so stuffed. <laughs> we have eaten so much food today. Rosh might actually need to roll me home. Come on, time to go home. Well, we have well and truly eaten our way through Chiang Mai and we only showed you a fraction of all the amazing food we have been eating. We've eaten so much delicious Thai food, so now I think it's time for us to learn how to cook it. So stay tuned for our part three of our Chiang Mai series, where we do a five hour cooking masterclass. But thank you for watching the video. We hope you enjoyed it. Like it if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you want to see more exclusive content, you can find the link to our Patreon community in the description below. But thank you for watching and we'll see you in our next one. Bye.